Good morning guys, good morning internet. Um, my name is CJ and I am back again with another narrated art time lapse for us to take a look at and review uh, and whatnot. Uh, it's one of my artwork, one of my longer format artworks that we're going to be taking a look at today. Um, so yeah, uh, so let's just jump right into it then. Um, right now I decided that I was going to do, or when I first started this uh, project I wanted to start out with a bunch of thumbnails and this is pretty much what I'm doing right now. Um, I marquee selected a few boxes on my canvas and then just put uh, a bunch of colors in there just so that it's not, you know, starting out from a blank piece, blank slate. Um, <clears throat> so that's what I'm doing right now. I'm just smudging a bunch of colors and putting them all in there and whatnot. And then basically what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to come up with an image based on the noise that I see. Um, I turn on the grayscale because uh, it, it makes things easier to see. And so yeah, I'm basically doing an outline on top of the shapes that I see. And um, well, it's over now. <laughs> I can't talk about it. But basically what happened in the thumbnail process was that I couldn't really come up with anything that I really liked, that I really wanted. So I just went ahead and just kind of went with the initial idea in my head, which is basically the image that you saw at the very beginning of the video. So yeah. Uh, and right now what's going on is that I'm messing around with Emmanuel Bastioni or Lab or um, the plugin that came after Emmanuel Bastioni Lab which is the MB Lab community plugin. Um, I'm messing around with it uh, to try and get some of my characters in and set them up. Um, and that group setting that I had them or set them up in the poses that I had them in my final image so <clears throat> so yeah that's what I'm working on right now and this is gonna go on for a while so while this goes on for a while I'm just gonna go ahead and take the time to basically go over my idea and where the idea of this image came from uh, mama's ice cream which is what this piece is called and the image is basically based off a uh, conceptart.org um, environment prompt. Uh, it happened again in 2018. Or, no, no, not in 2018. It actually happened earlier this year. Uh, sometime in April, I think, or sometime in May. Uh, it's sometime around springtime was when the prompt was when I ran into the prompt. And the prompt is basically. Uh, for us to draw an ice cream, or the prompt was uh, an ice cream stand slash store in a bad part of town. So, um, that was basically, um, that was basically the prompt. <laughs> an ice cream stand, an ice cream store in a bad part of town. And when I first read the prompt, like the very, very first idea that kind of came to my head was this image that Nikolai Lockardson did uh, on his video, uh, which I'm going to give a link to, to that in my description. Um, but Nikolai Lockardson actually did two images with kind of a similar theme, similar motif. Uh, he, they're both food stains. They're not exactly an ice cream stand, um, and yeah, and the the food stands are in this random part of town. Like one was in a poor um, setting, and then the other one was kind of like similar to what I have right now, which it looks like an industrial part. Like he drew this food stand. Nikolai Lockertson drew a food stand in this industrial area of the city. So, um, so yeah, that's basically where my inspiration came from. Uh, I saw the prompt and I knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to basically cre recreate something similar that Nikolai Lockerson did, which is like a food stand slash ice cream stand um, in this industrialized part of the town. Now, um, the prompt asked for us to do... Um, an ice cream stand in a bad part of town 
Um, so I, in order for me to kind of give the idea that this was the bad part of town, um, what I decided to do was that instead of it just being an industrialized part of town, I really made sure to make it look like it's an abandoned industrialized part of the town. In Nicolai Lockardson's uh, illustration, you'll see that a lot of the buildings are intact and yeah, they might be dirty, but they look like they're still functional. While in my illustration, you can tell that the the buildings I have surrounding this area it's pretty much like it's abandoned um, so yeah that was kind of like my idea was to kind of give this impression that this really is a bad part of town by making all the buildings all look abandoned but anyways as for my actual idea for the people um, what I decided to do to you know to illustrate or what I really wanted to illustrate in this image aside from the whole like this is the by power town yada, yada but what I really wanted to impart onto the viewer and what is going on in the scene is that this ice cream stand that I have affectionately called mama's ice cream because I'm so unoriginal <laughs> like I can't think of any other name for it aside from mama's ice cream so I just called it mama's ice cream <laughs> But what my idea for the Mama's Ice Cream stand too, on top of all my other inspirations, is that I really wanted this ice cream stand to be a sort of like um, a neutral ground or a neutral place. Kind of like the way uh, the Continental is in the movie John Wick, you know. Uh, the Continental in the movie John Wick, if you guys are not familiar with the movie. Um, the the Continental Hotel is a neutral place for you know competing gangs to meet and do business or you know uh, make friends or make amends or start wars I guess I mean I don't know but it's a neutral place and they don't really like like weapons are not allowed in the area basically so you know when I came up with my idea for for this illustration that's kind of like what I already have in mind was that this ice cream stain is going to be like the neutral ground of this bad part of town so in the final image you see that there's this really nicely dressed up gangbanger and then there's this other punk dude or whatnot and they're all carrying weapons and they're all like you know, they look like they're ready to shoot people or whatnot, but they're not shooting people. They're eating ice cream because they happen to be in neutral territory and they know they can't do anything. And so there's a reason why I have this like really odd and symbol of characters in my illustration. I have a hooker. I have uh, a f cop. I have a bunch of gangbangers, a bunch of hoodlums, a nun, uh, which is not part of the original drawing. As you can see, this is part of the original drawing. Um, and so, yeah, just all these different characters, uh, different kind of gangs, basically, all coming together to Mama's Ice Cream Stain because it is the neutral place. It is neutral ground. It is sacred ground. You do not go to war in sacred ground. <laughs> you know, let's just all have peace and eat ice cream kind of deal. And so, yeah, that's essentially what I wanted for the image to come across as. Um, so, yeah, wow, that was such a lengthy explanation for my ideas. Uh, man, when they get to talking, I really get to talking. Boy, yeah, so that was my idea. And that's basically what I sketched in in this speed paint. Um, so right now on this video... Uh, the 3D part is over, which I'm really surprised it went over much quicker than I thought. I thought it was going to go for a while. Um, and I guess I'll talk about that part in a little bit. But for now, let's just talk about what's going on in the video. Which, in the video, basically you saw me do the 3D part. Then I took the 3D rendered image, put it in Krita, my 2D application painting program. I did a quick sketch on top of that, and then I put in a bunch of colors and now I'm essentially basically uh, well after that 
uh, after putting in a bunch of colors underneath my outline sketch I smudged everything all into this recognizable shape and now I'm in my detailing phase actually that which is what's going on um, <clears throat> So yeah, I'm basically, you know, delineating my edges, accentuating the shadows, and adding highlights, um, which is what happens in my detailing phase. But this is basically a speed paint. And really, like, the conversation that I kind of want to talk about in this particular video is the difference between speed paint and a full render illustration um, with the way I do it anyways, you know. Um, because I know that some people are not very aware of what the differences are and whatnot. But speed paint, um, speed paint is really confusing because people use the word uh, different in certain situations. Some people think speed paint just means a speeded up video of a regular artwork process, you know. And some, uh, especially in the concept art industry, um, considers speed paint or spit paint uh, as what others would call it as basically any kind of artwork that's done fast and done quick um, so you know in a production cycle when you need to create art assets as fast as you can so that you know people can review it as fast as you can you definitely need to know your speed paint techniques and skills and so basically this is what this is you know this is me practicing my speed paint technique and speed paint skills um, but yeah I I knew that I wanted to speed paint it first so just so that I could have an entry um, for the environment of the week prompt which again like I stated earlier this was a prompt for the environment of the week subforum. And the environment of the week subforum in conceptart.org is basically just a forum that holds uh, weekly contests, mini contests, mini challenges. Uh, there's no prizes involved or whatnot. And it's not like a big contest like some of the other contests out there. It's mainly just for practice, you know. It's just for a bunch of people to get together and challenge each other with their skills. And it's supposed to go on a. It's supposed to be weekly, cause that's why it's called Environment of the Week. But it got extended into two weeks because obviously you know people um, need the extra time because a lot of people work full time and whatnot, and they couldn't really just sit there and just draw for a week and be able to finish. Um. So yeah, it goes for two weeks. But yeah, the Environment of the Week prompt. Uh, EOW332, if I'm not wrong, this is EOW332, the 332nd prompt. Um, basically, I knew that, um, I don't know what the circumstances were. I didn't know if I didn't have enough time or if I ran out of time or if I had initially wanted to just do a speed paint. I have a feeling that I initially initially just wanted to do a speed paint just as for practice basically because the previous years from beforehand um, the previous years beforehand I basically have problems with uh, finishing the challenges in time you know I mean even though two weeks is a very gracious uh, period of time uh, Unfortunately, you know, with all other obligations, that two weeks really isn't that enough, you know. Um, so even though I completed uh, some of the weekly contests in time, some I don't. And so that's part of the reason why I started practicing my speed paint, you know, is because at the very least, I want to be able to turn in something for the contest. And if I have to develop it later, fine, I'll develop it later, which is pretty much what I ended up doing on this piece, you know. But I really just wanted to practice this speed paint, you know, just get something down quick just so that I could turn something in into the challenge. And then after that, you know, I'll come back and really develop it some more. And so, yeah, this is basically what this piece is. It's a speed paint of uh, speed paint and entry
Um, so yeah, there goes the finished speed paint version, um, as you can see. Um, so yeah, sorry my train of thought. Um, it's kind of everywhere. That went by real fast. Like I was somehow expecting that whole thing to last like 20-30 minutes. And I'm really surprised that it only took like 15 minutes from the concept stage to the 3D to <laughs> me finishing it. Um, I guess, uh, yeah, I speeded it up really fast this time around. Um, so yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, my train of thought. Wow, okay. I have other stuff that I really wanted to talk about. Uh, especially with the whole speed paint versus illustration thing. I, I know I've talked about this before and I feel like going back over it again. So I will go back over it again. Um, but for now, let, let me talk real quick about what's going to happen in the video in the next few minutes. So basically after the speed paint, um, after I turn it in uh, and whatnot, why, when I finally found the time to finally you know, develop this piece farther. What I decided to do was to bring back the old 3D file that I have and I wanted to add some more to the image. So one of the first things that I really wanted to add was grids. I basically wanted some grids in there just to kind of help me with perspective. Um, Perspective is really tough. Uh, sometimes I get really lost, especially uh, when I start adding details and I start adding a bunch of stuff. Uh, I get really lost as to where the lines are. So that's what you just saw me did. I put all those grids and all the buildings and in the ground, on the ground, just so that I can have an idea of what the general perspective is. Um, so I could try to recreate it in my 2D application, painting application, and kind of just draw the lines out. And then the other thing that I decided to do was to edit the characters. Um, on the very first 3D uh, render that I did, I decided to cheat basically and make it easy on me the first time around. Which what I did the first time around was that I just basically used the same character over and over again, post him a bunch of different times and then put him all over the scene. So with this time around when I went back to 3D, I really wanted to have, you know, at the very least like different faces and different looking characters, which I started to do so. Um, you saw me put in this big fat Asian dude and then of course then the the girl, this girl right here, which eventually ends up being the nun. Um, so I set her up. And after uh, after these two characters, I think I did one more character, which is the thumbs eye guy at the very far right. I think he's a new character. But then after that, I pretty much realized that it was taking me too long that I was like, you know what, I'm just going to wing the rest of the characters. And so I decided not to re-render the cop, the hooker, and I think the girl inside in the store. I don't think that I redid their characters. Um, so yeah, which kind of proved to be problematic for me towards the end because I had this issue of uh, same faciness. Uh, I got that critique that my characters were kind of looking all the same. And so I had to re-edit them eventually. Um, but some of them are pretty unique looking. Like this guy. This is the punk guy. Uh, I was basically setting him up right now. Um, he was pretty unique looking. And he kind of stayed the same all throughout the rest of the illustration. Um, so yeah. Uh, but yeah. This is what this 3D part is. And then after this 3D part. I take it back into Krita. I The rendered image that I got out of the 3D software. Blender. What I did after I get that image. Um, I set up that image to kind of correctly align to the speed paint that I have. And then when they were correctly al aligned. I started doing this better looking sketch. This fine sketch. Which you'll see eventually. Um took me quite some time so yeah um so yeah <laughs> talk about the next few process I guess I'm, I'm free to talk 
about um, a dear, dear subject of mine. I feel like I talk so much about it, but I always feel like it bears repeating. Um, speed paint versus long illustrations versus fall render illustrations. Um, why is it special or why is full render illustration special? Why is speed paint special? Um, yeah, da, 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 and all that stuff. Um, I guess to summarize um, my feelings about it, uh, I guess I'll just start uh, with a summary of <laughs> my feelings about it. If I have a choice, I would personally prefer to do long render illustrations. And I've mentioned this before, and I'll stress it again. Um, I love my long render illustrations. If I could get away with it, I will. I will always do long render illustrations. Um, but the problematic nature of long render illustrations, aside from the fact that it takes a while, it takes a long, long time. If I'm not wrong, this piece took me about 40 to 50 hours, uh, which is a lot of time to be just drawing. Um, so aside from the fact that full render, long render illustrations, such as this one, takes a lot, takes a lot of time, it also takes a psychological toll. Um, basically what happens when you're in the middle of such a long illustration process like that is that you kind of get tunnel vision sometimes you kind of not recognize what's going on what's wrong with the image um, and you also get bored um, it's it's a struggle to try and finish a piece you know I mean if you look at a piece over and over again for three four straight days you're gonna get sick of it I mean you know I, I don't know if I don't Okay, <laughs> let me collect my thoughts for a second. Um, so yeah, <laughs> speed paint versus long illustration and how I feel about things, which if you've seen some of my videos, um, you guys will pretty much know or where I stand in the subject matter, which, which is that I prefer long illustrations, like I've already mentioned. Um, and for good reason, when, when you do long illustrations, um, what ends up happening is that um, you address all the issues that have been present in the initial speed paint. Um, well, let me backtrack and <laughs> re-explain. When you do a speed paint, basically, um, when you do a speed paint, you typically do it in one sitting. And in that one sitting, you get to a good state of the image, uh, a point in time or a point in the image where you're happy about things being balanced, you know. So it typically happens in one sitting. Sometimes I break it apart. There's times where I would do a speed painting in one or two sessions, sometimes three, never ever really more than three sessions. Um, because at that point, you know, if I do like a three session speed paint, uh, that really pretty much ends up being just like a regular illustration for me. But in a speed paint, typically in that one sitting, there's like a magic that happens, you know, there's like this instant balance that happens, you know. Um, and when you do illustrations, um, long, long ones, anyway, it's like the one I'm doing, you know, in a speed paint, even though everything is balanced for the most part, there will always be imperfections. But that's the beauty of the imperfections is that, well, <laughs> the beauty is the imperfection in, in, in the case of a speed paint. Um, I guess the best way to illustrate it would be to talk about um, 
impressionism versus french classical so i guess we'll do a history lesson in order for me to verbalize my thoughts properly because this is something that i've never ever really done in all the times i've talked about speed paint versus long illustration i've never talked about the at least from a historical perspective um of it so basically back in the day everything was done very very carefully which is again like my stance um uh think of like the renaissance paintings um uh, leonardo da vinci Raphael, michelangelo of course the four turtle artists you know um all of those artists basically from the renaissance period all the way up to right before impressionism so right after the realism i think uh or maybe it's something else uh, i forgot what the movement was um but for a good 300 years um the the way art was done was very very uh carefully you know you do it for months at a time you layer your paintings you add to the initial sketch you do your initial sketch and then you add to it uh, and then just keep adding to it and constantly refine images basically you know it's a very careful process that goes on for months typically um and then impressionism came and when impressionism came i'm about to oversimplify the historical significance of impressionism because i'm going to say like they're the original speed painters but the truth of the matter is they're not exactly speed painters if you think if you look at edward manet for example he's not actually a speed painter he's he's very careful with his paintings even though he has like the impressionist style um he is a very slow painter or very much like the paints very much like the French classicals like William Adolfo Bouguereau for example he kind of paints like that in terms of you know taking your time and layering your images um, but the quintessential impressionist artist that really I, I, I would very much like to talk about is Vincent van Gogh even though Vincent van Gogh is a post impressionist he's considered post impressionism um, he is what I would consider the pinnacle of an impressionist artist um, at the end of his career right before he died he was basically doing a painting a day you know um, his paintings are really fast real loose um, and just as the name of the genre suggests very impressionistic very um, lively very you know it's it's just very bold essentially is what impressionism is um and even though they're not essentially speed painters one of the hallmarks of impressionism is speed painting um impressionists happen uh, part of the reason why impressionists has happened was because of the technical innovations in art uh, during that day during that day um the easel um there's this kind of easel that got invented that basically makes it easy to paint outside um, part of the reason why paintings were done mainly in a studio is because there's so much stuff to carry around that you know painting outside wasn't a, a very viable option uh, until uh, the 1800 rolls around and one of the things that got invented is portable easel basically you know which makes it easy for artists to go out and paint the other invention that made it easy for artists to go out and paint aside from the portable easel is um is tubes uh paint started getting put into tubes and when you put paint in tubes they preserve longer so you don't have to be in a studio setting uh, in order to paint and so basically the original plain air painters would be the impressionist artists right and when you paint on location one of the things that you really need to do while you're painting on location is, is speed there's no way around it if you're painting outside 
on site, on location, you have to be fast. And part of the reason why you have to be fast is because of the sun. The sun moves, right? And the way the sun would look like at 8 o'clock in the morning is different at 10 o'clock in the morning. The shadows are different. The, the lighting conditions are different. Um, so essentially, everything just needs to be done fast, around the two hour to three hour mark. Um, that's usually my rule for my speed paints. It needs to be around two, three hours. Sometimes I extend it to five and I qualify that, even though the majority of my speed paints are under three hours. Um, so yeah, the Impressionists were basically the ones who kind of popularized this this movement, this practice, this art practice. And when they first got started, they were hated for it. They were they were not very popular <laughs> among art critics and art historians of that time. Um, for them, impressionism feels sketchy, feels undeveloped, feels you know, it just wasn't art for them. <laughs> essentially, it was what a lot of historians and art critics at that time that's the way they look at impressionism you know because it was done so fast it was done so quick and you know um the the technique that was required to do that um didn't look very good i mean yeah the technique made it fast but the tech the technique didn't make it look there wasn't a whole lot of glazing you know like there wasn't a whole lot of layering of paint and all that stuff you know um so basically um that's where things kind of got started um in my opinion anyways um of course i'm oversimplifying history but the whole idea of like speed paint versus a developed artwork that was basically like the first split because you know even though there were like art movements that changed from um there were many different art movements from renaissance period till now right there was a lot of them and most of the changes that happened in the first 300 years were in subject matter you know like the first popular subject matters were always religious you know subjects and then naturalism came around and realism came around and then the subjects changed it became about the people you know or in the case of the hudson river school the emphasis was on the landscapes and all that stuff so you know the big changes in art really were about the subject matter it was never about the technique up until impressionism came where you know the technique became the focus you know and to a certain extent, speed became uh, a focus, you know. Basically, artists were like discarding this whole, let's sit down in the studio for months on end working on one painting kind of deal, you know. Let's just paint something really quick and get it done and over with, you know, to get the impression of that moment, you know. Um, so, yeah. Um, now, trying to relate the story and where I'm going with this, my train of thought is like everywhere, basically. Uh, this is unscripted, by the way. I'm always unscripted um, when I do my vocal audio recordings. Uh, I write notes, you know, and I have tons of notes, but you know how it is when you get to talking, you kind of just veer off your notes and you're kind of just all over the place. But what I'm really trying to impart, uh, basically, is... It's the significance between a speed painter versus a long illustration. Because when Impressionists happened, the standard method of art that was really popular was pretty much your standard of art that's been happening for 300 years. Um, the time when Impressionists happened, um, the, the movement that was really popular is what you would call the French classical realism. You know, it's still realism, kind of like the way Renaissance realism was. You know, and again, you know, French classical realism is like your slow, methodical, let's lay your paint over and over again until, you know, everything's balanced kind of deal. Well, Impressionism obviously isn't, you know, in its simplified terms. Again, you know, people can argue that Impressionism is not really about speed painting. It's really about the style technique, yada, yada, yada. 
but I'm really specifically talking about Van Gogh's specifically Van Gogh because you know if you look at his paintings you can tell he was a speed painter I mean you could tell in his strokes in Edward Manet it might not be as obvious uh, in Monet it is kind of obvious um, but in some other impressionist artists it's kind of hard to tell like uh, Edgar Degas for example you know you could kind of tell he was kind of semi-fast but he really couldn't um, and whatnot but anyways going back to the idea of what I'm trying to get at especially with Van Gogh the, the thing with speed paint is that you get this kind of vibrancy that you don't get with long illustrations and the best example I can give is starry starry night with Van Gogh which is Wow, all that prelude just to try to get to Starry Starry Night. If you are not familiar with Starry Starry Night, you need to look it up now. Everyone knows what Starry Starry Night is. A painting by Vincent van Gogh. It is very, very expressive. It is a very, very emotional piece of painting. And it is gorgeous. It is beautiful. And guess what? It is done fast. And, you know... <laughs> And it's unique because in its beauty because it is so gorgeous. But if you try to develop Starry Night into a long polished illustration, which is what I'm used to doing, or if you try to develop Starry Night into a William Adolfo Bogoro painting, I could guarantee you that that gorgeousness would just die. <laughs> it would just be dead. Because what makes Starry Night so gorgeous is because of its immediacy, its vibrancy, you know. And that's kind of what really I wanted to contrast with this whole video or what I really wanted to talk about. And why I'm, I'm so obsessed with this debate between being, being fast and being slow, you know. And... To summarize my feelings, because somebody just asked me what exactly is my favorite, you know, and even though I practice both techniques, you know, um, it's not really apparent what my favorite is. But anyways, so somebody asked me like what, how I feel or, you know, a summary of how I feel about the two techniques. And this is, I guess, um, the best way to, for me to summarize it. With long render illustrations, I, I love my long, hold on, let me backtrack, wow, okay, I love my long render illustrations more than my speed paints. If I have a choice, I would always do long render illustrations than speed paints. The reason why I, f I feel this is because with my long render illustrations, you know, you take the weakest one, the ugliest one out of all my long render illustrations and it's still gonna look 10 times better than my okay speed paints. You know, now in defense of my speed paints and the reason why I still do speed paints is because my favorite speed paints, my favorite ones, um, there, there's not that very many even though I do speed paints all the time and I probably have hundreds by now I'll probably only like like 20 to 25 of them but those 20 to 25 speed paints out of the hundreds I've done that I love those speed paints are a hundred times better than my okay long render illustrations so to summarize it, it's like, you know, your long render illustrations, if, if you talk in terms of money and investment, for example, your long render illustrations would be your long term bets, your, your stable bets, you know, your investments in real estate or something, you know, while well, your speed paint would be what you would call the bull market, you know, like the quick, dirty, easy money you know in the hopes that maybe you'll score big even though nine times out, out of ten you really won't you know and so that's how I feel about the two and that's the reason why I I, I practice both you know 
aside from the practical necessities of it. I mean, it's important for me to do my speed paints because I know that there are some clients who cannot pay for the long illustrations. Like they just absolutely do not have a budget for that. You know, if if they have a choice between paying me for 40 hours versus just paying me for three hours, they know in their head that paying me for three hours will be, will be way cheaper than paying me for a full week, you know? Um, so yeah, for the ones who are budget conscious about you know their art purchases, they're definitely gonna need to purchase a speed paint just because it's practical for them, and that's part of the reason why I practice it. But the other reason why I practice speed paint, even though my success rate with speed paint is very low, the reason why I still practice it is because for those few rare times where you know I create something in 15 20 minutes and I look at it you know two three years down the road and I'm still like wow that was an awesome speed paint like that was a very good gorgeous looking speed paint you know um so yeah, I feel like that with some of my speed paints. Um, like one of my favorite speed paints that I did this year was uh, By the Light of the Moon, you know. And By the Light of the Moon uh, only took me about three and a half hours. And I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. There's errors in colors when you look at it. And there's errors in rendering. Um, there's errors in proportion when you look at it. You know, um, there's there's just tons of errors in, in that illustration. But somehow with everything else that I put in in that illustration, it just makes all those errors be okay, you know, like not so obvious, you know. Now if I try to develop that illustration, is it gonna take me like I guess another 20, 30 hours to recapture that balance and that initial balance that I made. Um so yeah will the picture be more successful than the speed paint i don't know i won't know until i see which is kind of like what i'm going through with with this particular image you know at the very beginning of the video or about 20 minutes ago right at the 15 minute mark you saw me put up the speed paint version which at that point in time has taken me four hours of work there was about 10 to 15 minutes of the pre-planning stage about an hour of 3d which you saw me do the 3d and then about three hours of just pure painting and then there was about 30 minutes of edits that I did after I got a few comments about what I needed to work on and yada, yada, yada. and so I did about 30 minutes at edit so all together there's about three and a half to about four hours of work that was put in there uh, before I've called it quits on the speed paint version um, if you look at the speed, face, speed paint version versus the final version, uh, personally for me, I will go with the final version. You know, I really think that the final version of this illustration is like way more balanced than the speed paint one, right? But there's a certain kind of spontaneity with the speed paint version. Um, if you look at the speed painted version, you will see that. I was actually more brave in some of my choices um, in in the speed paint version. Um, if you look at it, like one of the things that I adore in the original version was was the hooker. You know, the hooker in the developed version has become tamer. If you look at the original one, the original one actually did not have a sweater covering her up. You know. Um, not only that, but um, the original hooker skirt was so short you actually see her underwear, you know. But on on the more developer version, you actually didn't see that, you know. Um, now, when I was working on a hooker, none of those were conscious decisions on my part, you know. I wasn't like actively thinking like, oh, I need to cover her up because Mother Teresa is going to come over and kill me, you know? Like I wasn't really consciously thinking that at all. Like I, I didn't have it in my mind, you know? My brain just kind of led me there in a way. Um, so I, I guess to a certain degree, I'm like a lot more conservative than I would like to think that I am. Um, but 
yeah uh, so that's a stark contrast see there's the original speed paint version right there you, you saw the hooker being more naked essentially even though she's not naked she looks more naked um so the hooker was totally different in the original version another brave thing that i consider brave in the original speed paint version was the cop the cop has something in that original version that you will never ever see in real life which is a pink tie in this pea painted version since i was in such a rush right i didn't bother trying to grab another color from the color wheel instead of i just grab was the closest color in that area and it just so happens that the col closest color uh in that area around the tie was pink you know because um, I guess there was some little red from left over from when I was painting his face or something. I I'm not sure. But I just color picked that pink without even thinking about it. And just put that pink <laughs> as a tie for the, for the cop, right? So the cop ended up with this pink tie. And, and that's a brave decision, you know. That was a brave subconscious decision on my part. And the reason why I think that's brave is because you wouldn't consciously think that if you're drawing a regular cop I mean I don't consciously think that and the reason why I don't consciously think of putting a pink tie on a cop is because you will never ever see that in any police uniform anywhere in the world you know I mean historically pink color has always been a female color you know um, even though <laughs> a bunch of designers have always tried to innovate and tried to you know make pink more manly and whatnot in the end pink has always predominantly been a female color um so if i was to if i was given an assignment of you know drawing a police officer or a cop i would not consciously think of putting a pink tie um uh, a pink tie in his police uniform but it's just because you'll never ever see that in any police in any of the world out there it just will not exist right but since I was in such a hurry with the speed paint you know and I was just in a mad rush just to get it done I just you know grabbed the pink without even thinking about it and just drew it in and there you go the cop has a pink tie um, so again those are like really cool looking decisions or cool looking art decisions or art drawings or art renderings that I did in the original speed paint version that are very cool that you know in the end kind of had to go away you know um, in favor of realism you know um, and again that's the reason why I, I wanted to contrast the two you know because even though my preference is for the safe bet which the safe bet is always the long illustrations you know because everything will end up more balanced if you spend more time on it you know um so yeah even though my preference is for for the safer bet the long illustration sometimes when i do my speed paints there's just just really cool things that happen during that speed paint that i'm just like wow that that's kind of cool you know and no matter how much i want to try to preserve that coolness factor <laughs> sometimes i just couldn't you know just because because realism you know especially when you're dealing with realism you kind of just have to keep going for the realistic look and a realistic look in the case of the cop's uniform calls for a non-pink tie <laughs> Oh so, yeah, the pink tie just went away. But yeah, it's a nice contrast, you know. Whether I feel that my speed painted version is better than the final illustration, yeah, not really. But there are absolutely some cool aspects of the speed painted version that you just don't see in my final version. So I guess in a way to conclude my summary, it'd be like I love them both, you know. But I do have my preference for the long illustration, which I really wish I had more time to do, but unfortunately I don't. <laughs> That's the reason why it took me forever to finish this piece. So yeah.
Perfect.
Okay, so I'm almost done with this munching part, um, which um, for the ones who's not familiar, or if you know, I guess I could um, <laughs> reiterate my process. Um, at some point in time in my painting, I always do the smudging thing, especially after I do the photo bashing thing. And when I smudge, I basically try to form recognizable shapes. It's blurry, it's kind of messy, um, but at least it's a readable shape. Like, you know, in this case, you can read where all the humans are. And the reason why I do this whole smudging thing is just to blend all the colors in. Um, so basically what I'm really trying to do is just to get a good base uh, paint. Uh, that's what I call it. And you can see it on the right there for a second. I have that layer called base paint, which is the bottom layer. And so all my painting typically happens on top of this. All the detailing goes on top of this. Um, but to talk real quick about what happened for like the past few minutes. Um, what basically happened after I um, uh, after I did the speed paint? Um, I'm gonna take the time to talk about what what my process now that I'm about to start detailing. <sighs> okay, so to talk about the past thirty minutes since I was talking about speed paint versus long illustration. What happened after the speed paint is um, when I got the new render. Or after the speed paint, I did the 3D thing again, which I recorrected some of the perspectives, some of the grids, and then I did some of the characters. I redid some of the characters. That particular render that just popped up for a second there. Um, when I got that render, I brought it back in, realigned it with my old speed paint, and then I did a good drawing, a really fine drawing. And uh, I, I wish I had taken the time to talk about it, because you know, uh, thinking about it now. Um, and when I look at it earlier, um, I don't do my fine sketch in the beginning. You know, most traditional artists, or your, you know, technically your your steps, your traditional steps would be to do your good fine sketch at the very beginning. Um, but mine, I do mine halfway through um, because I'm more of like the carver. Um, there's this term in art term where you kind of carve your shapes out. And then you detail, you put your details on top of it. Um, I, I'm so used to doing it that way that, you know, I could typically do the detailing without a good clean sketch. But in this case, since the people, I really wanted to concentrate on the people and highlight uh, the people, the characters in the image, I, I knew that I really needed a good sketch on it. So. I did a good sketch and then after I did the sketch I did pretty much the same process that I did earlier you know um, which is I brought in some photos um, and photo bashed them in uh, this time I placed them more uh, succinctly rather than haphazardly uh, the first time around when I put the photos in I was just kind of just putting it there without that much thought about placement, you know, because I knew that I just wanted some form of a building there and some form of a floor there or some form of a texture there, you know. Um, but the second time around that I did it, since I already had like my initial speed paint, which was acting as a base paint, right? That initial speed paint was acting as a base paint. Since I kind of have a guideline of where things were going to be, I then replace re put my photos in or rebash my photos in but this time I was placing them more accordingly to the shapes that I got from the speed paint um, so I used that to dictate where the photos were gonna go in not only that but I also used the guides the perspective guides that I get from the second render I used those to kind of help me place things out too um, I still had trouble uh, especially with the floor like the two buildings in the back they were placed correct perspective wise um, because of the render guides that I had put in on my second render um, but with the floor the floor was just really difficult because it was 
it, it was too flat basically or it was the the perspective was too skewered that it was just hard for me to kind of like put my photos properly um so i did my best basically with the floor uh, i did my best to like line them all up and make sure that they all work and for the most part they kind of did um so i rebash my photos and then recolor uh some parts of the piece and then and then after that i worked concentrated um more on the characters by adding some colors uh, doing the whole two-tone thing uh, kind of delineating where the light and dark is going to be and then after I have all my layers um, at that point in time I would probably have like 20 30 layers at that point um, after I have all those layers different layers and then I started doing a lot of tweaks on the lighting just to balance out all the lighting all the values so that it reads correctly and whatnot and then when I've done all my tweaks I put all of them in one layer and then I smudge them into recognizable shapes so I basically have another base paint to work on so my process is basically the this process what I'm doing right now is basically pretty much like the speed painted version except a much longer version of the speed paint version the speed paint i was just in a hurry just to get things done just to have something out quickly as possible right five hours boom done and then on this one around this time around when i did all the photo bashing in and when i did the initial paints and then i did the initial tweaks color tweaks i'm doing some color tweaks right now too as you can see but um, i think these were just tests i didn't end up going with any of these um, but I did a bunch of these filter corrections initially before if you rewind the video you'll you'll see it um, So yeah, when I do all the photo bashing re recoloring retweaks and all that that uh, I Have a feeling took me about five to ten hours, maybe uh, Maybe not so much as ten hours, but maybe around the five between the five to ten hour mark for sure so I first have my initial five hour speed paint um, or really it was four hours speed paint and then from the fifth hour to like about 11 or 12th hour I did all those layers that I did right um, and then when I started smudging everything down that was probably about the 15th hour mark um, was when I was smudging things around so basically from the 15th hour till basically the end of this piece which again I, I haven't calculated how long it took me to do this piece uh, I have a feeling it's close to 50 I could be wrong but yeah I think I might have worked 50 hours on this so basically from 15 hour uh, all the way to the 50th hour all of it was just pretty much just brute detailing um, with some minor color corrections um, you saw me after I did my smudging I tried to do some more color corrections just to try and balance things out um, one of the problems that I was running into was that the background was too strong initially it was it was popping out too much it was competing with the foreground so I, I had to tone it down and initially I was going to try and go with a different color scheme um, Right now, if you take a look at it, um, the color scheme is predominantly pink, yellow, warm in the foreground area and blue, bluish, greenish almost in the background. Very muted bluish and greenish, very desaturated. And then the foreground is very saturated. So that's kind of like the competing contrast that I'm working with, right? And I decided to just go ahead and run away with this. But initially, I was trying to figure out if there's something else I could do, you know, like make it like a cool foreground, warm background, or, you know, or I don't know, a bluish foreground, reddish background, but like none of those stuff work. You know, I think this is exactly the one that worked best. The warm foreground and with the cool back, cool desaturated background. So yeah, um, so as soon as I have settled on the colors, um, I have started the detailing part, essentially. Um, 
I did the background first and again when I detailed the background I did it real quick I probably just worked on it for like an hour or two uh, and that's after I worked on the background is when I realized that the background was too strong so you know when I realized that I did the color tweaks that we just saw not too long ago and then after that I just started working on the car and on the ground you can see me work on the ground right now and this ground again like I said was just so problematic for me perspective wise it was just so hard for me to figure out if the perspective is right you know so you see me constantly flip the canvas back and forth um, just to you know just to look at it with fresh eyes essentially you know look at it from a different perspective and you can see that I really struggle with the floor um, uh, just trying to figure out if if it's lining up corrective correct perspective wise um, but yeah in the end it, w what I feel like I did you know kind of worked out for the most part um, I actually really like the floor uh, I'm not sh too sure how I feel about its saturation levels I feel like it's too oversaturated and I, I don't know how I feel about the color too about it being so pink reddish yellow in fact I'm not even really sure about the yellow altogether in this piece um, I remember talking to someone about how I felt about the inside of of the stand, the ice cream stand. I felt like the ice cream stand was just too yellow, um, and I, I didn't like it, you know. But I, I couldn't think of any other combination that would have worked well. Um, in hindsight, maybe if I had experimented more, maybe I could have come up with something. But I guess for me, in the interest of just preserving what was already there and what feels like working. Because um, for the most part, it worked, right? The yellow, for the most part, worked. Um, so yeah, in, ter in, in the interest of like preserving time and just preserving like what's already kind of working, you know, I just decided to just toughen it out and just stick with it and just keep working with what I have, um, which is pretty much just stick with the yellow. Um, so yeah, and yeah, after that, it's just pretty much just straight up detailing, um, the most tenuous, strenuous part of my illustration. And again, I've mentioned this before, you know, I'll mention it again. This is, this is part of the reason why, um, it's tough for me to do this long illustration at times because it does get tedious. It gets so, so tedious. Um, but you know, if you push through it, if you keep going through it, the rewards I feel are, are great, you know, so long as everything is balanced, um, and you know, you keep constant, you keep getting constant critiques on it, you know, just to kind of help you check on what you're doing, uh, then you'll be okay. Um, part of the other problem with doing long illustrations like this is that y you get tunnel vision, you know, sometimes you just get stuck into doing this certain thing that you think is working but isn't really working and you really needed fresh eyes to take a look at it. Uh, so that's the reason why it's always kind of important uh, during this process to keep getting constant critiques um, and whatnot. I don't. You know, I know it's important for me to get critiques and did get a lot of critiques on this one actually throughout the creative process. But for me, I always try to minimize it because the biggest problem I have with critiques is that sometimes I get so bogged down by them. Not like bogged down like, oh, you know, people are hating my artwork. No, 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 not none of that stuff. Like what happens when I get too much critique is that I get too overloaded with information that I don't know what to do with my artwork and so I really you know try try my best to minimize the critiques you know like if I have a choice if I have a preference I would just work with like one person like that would be like the ideal situation right um in a studio or like in my old work for example um, when I used to do work uh, as an interior designer I, I really just have one person to answer to and that situation was ideal because you know it was just one person that I you know kind of have to cater to 
but in certain situations such as this one where you know I was getting critiques from different groups you know I get so many different um, critiques and not only that but sometimes I get varying differences of critiques you know like competing critiques it gets really hard for me to decipher like which one to follow especially if they're competing you know if like one side says you need to do this and the other side says you need to do that then I'm just like well I can't decide <laughs> you know and so during long processes like this I do seek out critiques but I always try to be careful with critiques too and making sure that I don't get bogged down by it because I knowing me I get bogged down really quick cause when you get too many critiques so yeah um, so yeah just like in re everything else in life you know I guess balance is the key so so yeah it's important to get critiques but make sure to balance it too um, make sure that the critiques are good too uh, and that's always important um, I guess tips for beginning artists um, the tips I can get give beginning artists for um, for what to do with critiques is that you know do what I do where I post in separate different groups and see if like the same critique keeps popping up in different groups because if different groups of people are saying the same exact thing you know that's something that needs to be worked on you know so um, if I'm working in a piece and everybody says um, you're too pink or too green this is actually a common critique of my, of my illustrations if I post in different groups a bunch of people start saying wow your pieces are too green or too pink then you know this is a sign for me to work on that um, and so I will work on that um, so that's always like a good thing to do um, is to post on multiple different groups um, just to see if like the critiques kind of go with each other you know and if if not if they don't then you know that it's not something to be concerned about you know like if somebody mentions some critique but it doesn't get repeated in two or three other groups that you're in then you know that that critique is something that you could discard and not have to worry so much about basically is what I'm trying to get at so that's a good technique to do post in multiple different groups just to see what kind of critiques you'll get and for the repeating critiques then yeah work on those and if a critique doesn't bother you as much and you see that it doesn't get repeated in other groups then you know that you can get away with not having to entertain that critique so yeah those are things that you can do uh, with critiques and again of course watch out the too many critiques because once it gets to be too many then that gets super confusing too so so yeah like I said um, I try to minimize the amount of critiques I get while posting at different groups
So at this point in time, I'm pretty much done like detailing the back, um, uh, the background area um, is for the most part done. Um, I worked on the floor and you know I finished it. It was pretty successful. Um, the buildings in the back were easy, which um, I should have mentioned that earlier. The trash on the right side was super easy. Like that, that was amazingly fun to do. Um, detailing that trash and the reason why it was fun to do was because when I photo bash all those images in um, oh and by the way before I forget all the photos I use are from textures.com and photobash.org um, all royalty free so I needed to make sure that I mentioned that at some point in time in this video which I totally forgot but yeah check those two sites out great places to uh, get some resources in and there's a few others that I use too, uh, like Pixel, which I just recently found is amazing. And I guess there's another one called Pixabay, um, which I've heard before, but I've never officially gone to. So that's another resource site that I'm going to check out pretty soon. Uh, so yeah. But anyways, going back to what I was saying, um, the the trash images, stock images that I put on the right side really helped me... Um, with the detailing phase you know since the general shape uh, of the trash brush was already there it was just easy for me to just kind of sharpen things out and kind of just add some highlights and do the shadows and boom it was done it was really quick um, the only thing in the background that gave me a hard time was the car uh, initially if you look at the speed painted version it was much much smaller you know because my idea for the car was that it was that it's supposed to be farther away um, from everyone else and that was my original intention for the car but uh, somebody mentioned it somebody gave a critique about how it looked off you know and the moment that they mentioned it I couldn't get it out of my head uh, I was looking at the Asian guy the Asian um, fancy suit guy and he is pretty much like the closest guy to the car right and I keep thinking it's like yeah it, it looks off you know even though my intention is for the car to be far away which means the car would have been smaller the thing was that there wasn't any objects between the car and the Asian guy to kind of indicate distance um, literally the closest thing was the car and nothing else and so I went ahead and made a conscious decision to just make it big, make the car bigger. So I basically took the old photo from photobash.org and kind of, um, or from textures.com, I actually got that from textures.com. Um, so I got that photo of the car and just kind of rebashed it in and make it all like good size, huge size, uh, so that it would fit in the image uh, a little bit better. And the first time I did it, I, I kind of had made a mistake I put the car closer to the exit door of the ice cream stand and then I realized my mistake I was like well that that car is blocking the exit door which you could see on the right right now um, because I'm on the flip side but when I flip it right there I flipped it back you can see the door on the left right behind the nun uh, so that's the exit door right that's the door you use to get in and out of this ice cream stand and the, the car was right next to it and I realized my mistake I'm like oh I gotta move that car <laughs> or else that girl stuck there forever so I moved it um, so basically um, that's what I did for the background all together with the floor and again like I said the floor was the only one that really gave me a hard time like detailing the part where I'm like kinda have to recheck myself on how to do this kinda deal and then after that, um, the other big change that I did was the sign. Somebody mentioned that the whole image was calling out for a neon sign. And it kind of makes sense. Uh, neon signs are typically cheap to make. So, you know, if you have an establishment such as, such as a stand, like a low-cost establishment like a stand, you know, typically you will, you will pretty much see like a... A neon sign just because it's kind of cheap to manufacture you know um, so I like the idea of the neon sign 
but now that I got a good look at the speed paint again because I haven't looked at the speed paint in like months right since I've been working on this but when I was looking at the speed paint earlier when I was trying to make my notes for this video I realized I actually really like the original sign because the original sign was graffiti and the graffiti sign actually kind of fits into the whole idea that this is in a bad part of town you know um, so part of me kind of feels like yeah maybe I should have preserved that you know I, I think preserving that would have made much much more sense than the neon sign that I went with but alas it is neon sign now <laughs> so we ended up with the neon sign um, so yeah I did that edit change it to a neon sign because somebody suggested it and then someone else mentioned that the neon sign was kind of looking too flat you know so I kind of had to work on the depth of it and let me tell you it's difficult like I have never drawn neon signs before and I can tell you right now my neon sign looks horrible I mean it looks functional from from an overall perspective you know like if you look at it in full like the way I'm looking at it right now I'm like okay yeah it makes sense but in general it looks horrible like I, I personally feel that it could be better you know but I looked up references of neon signs and none of them kind of really give me a good indication on how to paint them you know so none of the images I found really helped me in the end so I kind of just went with imagination <laughs> on that one uh, so yeah and then uh, after I got done with all of those I detailed the girl first before I detailed the inside of the stand which you see me right now I'm almost finished with detailing the inside and uh, again as I mentioned earlier like I don't like the colors like I just don't know what to do with the colors it remains so yellow throughout the whole piece um, but amazingly enough like I was able to work with it like every detail that I put in on the inside the ice cream stand I actually love I love every single little thing that I did inside the ice cream stand I'm just not too happy with the color you know but I do love the contrast it provides the yellow and the pink warm foreground versus the cool blue background I think kind of works well I did got kind of got some critique about the green because there's a lot of green in this piece and somebody mentioned about how you know all my color choices you know kind of goes well with each other except for the green which the green is off um, so somebody mentioned that and then someone else mentioned not so much about the green but some um, well it, it kind of goes along with green but what they mentioned was uh, was the dominant color um, you can see right now especially since I'm working at a nun and, and the nuns right in front of us so I guess this is uh, a good part to talk about it you can see on the nuns legs uh, the highlight is green um, it should not be green um, but you can see on her leg and on a lot of the people like the highlight is green and looking back at you know the video and remembering like what happened earlier in the video I honestly don't remember where the green came from I uh, I wish I could take a look at it now but I can't because I'm playing the video um, I think the green came from the two-tone initial two-tone that I set I, I knew I did a deep blue background but for some odd reason I thought I did a yellow high highlight um, so maybe that's not where the green came from um, okay well I'm not sure <laughs> I'm not sure where the green came from and what conscious decision made me choose green as the highlight but it was obviously wrong right and I got into a debate with someone about it I love you sticky I love you bro I really do um, this guy named sticky in sketch on was the one who who I got into a debate about this um, and he's right he's right basically but his main comment um, was that the cyan it was really cyan at this point it wasn't so much as green I, I got a separate comment about there's green 
uh, in the piece and I needed to kill it and I did kill it for the most part but there's some leftover green that kind of mixed in with the blue that ended up looking like cyan which is what the highlight on the nun's legs are and the highlight on the cop right um what they mentioned is that even though the cyan uh, highlight kind of goes along with the neon sign I mean the neon sign is blue right and so you would think in a neon blue sign like it would cast like cyan highlights and that kind of makes sense right but the problem is that the neon sign is not the dominant light source in the scene the dominant light source is the inside of the ice cream stand which is yellow you know and when I was doing this detailing phase right here, like I didn't recognize that at all. Again, this is like one of those things with the tunnel vision where sometimes you kind of get stuck in your head and, you know, logically you know what to do, but you're missing out on some particular pieces of information that could be very, very helpful. And in this case, like the sign highlights, like it didn't really go well. Now, when I got into an argument with Sticky about it, you know, I kind of made the issue about whether it was a stylization issue or a realism issue, you know, because from a stylization point of view, it really wasn't that bad altogether, you know, like keeping the cyan in there as a highlight instead of like a warm highlight, which I ended up with after all. Um, keeping the cyan highlight as a stylization isn't really actually all that bad in all honesty because I couldn't even really recognize it especially if you if you do like a value check on it and you just do like the gray check on it it really actually does not look that bad um, and then when you activate the colors you know obviously like yeah you see cyan but I guess in part of your head it kind of goes along with the neon sign so it's like okay you know um, so overall like personally for me stylization wise like it would have worked because not a whole lot of people notice it you know but from a realistic point of view from a realism point of view and from you know a logical point of view sticky was actually right um and in fact when i redid the characters you know um I ended up with yellow highlights just to go along with the yellow on the inside of the ice cream stands. Uh, the yellow actually worked a lot better, you know, now that I've seen the yellow and looked at the yellow, I'm like, okay, yeah, the yellow is better, you know. But then at that time, you know, maybe I was just so exhausted from working the piece that I couldn't really decipher whether it was a valid critique that I should entertain or if it was one of those critiques that I should ignore, you know. Kind of like what I mentioned earlier, you know, where in, in that particular case, he was really the only one that was mentioning it, you know, and I, I didn't really hear anyone else mention anything about the highlights except him. You know, so it was like one of those critiques where it was like, should I entertain it or should I ignore it, you know. But then I got a few other critiques about the characters, about how some of the characters look, you know, kind of same facey, like they were rendered like they were looking all the same and uh, there were some critiques on uh, the hand gestures like the hand gestures of this punk guy right now does not read very well um, but I'm okay with that what really matters was the nun like her hand just disappeared like if you look at it from afar like right now you, you could barely see what her hand is doing like it's hard to read her hand essentially and so I had to redo that and and when I got all these critiques I realized well since I'm already getting all these critiques that might require a lot of work I might as well just um, redo the whole thing uh, including the highlights and so yeah I, I redid the highlights um, but yeah in, in hindsight though like the way I approached the fix and the way I did the fix was just uber wrong um, and I guess I'll go about it in a second but as for now um, I'll, I'll just talk about what's going on in the video which is pretty much me just detailing all the characters for the most part and I'm just detailing it and in the next few minutes or so and in about 20 minutes or so you'll see me like wrap up all those characters right and 
finish it up and then after that you'll see me restart the characters uh, and I'll tell you why in a second
Okay, so um, yeah, I just finished pretty much rendering the whole piece, and uh, right before this part um, was the part that uh, I showed to everyone for last critique, basically, and. That part before this, uh, like I mentioned earlier, I felt was pretty much complete. Like aside from the whole I issues that was raised, which is the same faceness and um, oh, another critique, which is like uh, no one's eating ice cream. Somebody mentioned that <laughs> as I watched the cop, as I watched me drawing the cop eating ice cream. Uh, so those were mentioned, and again, like. Um, like what I've mentioned or kind of like what I said um, all of those critiques in all honesty felt like they were easy edits like changing the face for example uh, was a fairly easy edit and having someone eat ice cream because somebody mentioned that in the original speed paint someone was eating ice cream but then in the final version in the developed version no one was eating ice cream so I figured okay well I'll make the cop eat ice cream you know um, because originally it was the punk guy that was eating ice cream, but then now he's doing the thumbs up. So I figured, you know, I'll keep him doing thumbs up and then I'll have the cop eat ice cream. So all those edits were really fairly done fairly quick and easy. Um, but the rest of the thing that I did, which was uh, to address the whole cyan issue, um, the stuff that I did after all those quick edits, I felt like was wrong, basically. Um, I felt that there could have been a much better way for me to have fixed the whole science issue, cyan, color cyan issue, than what I decided to go to go with. And what I decided to go with was basically just to repaint the whole thing, which is just so wrong. In my head, I had this idea that if I had, you know, um, basically I was just going to go through the process of of uh, what I typically do, which is do the quick speed paint, then put some colors in and photo bash some photos, which in this case I didn't photo bash some photo photos, I just use some colors, and then merge them all together and smudge them which is what I'm about to do you know so I, I set the two-tone thing in just to kind of help me figure out where the light it, light are and then I'm recoloring everything in and all this stuff right so basically it's the same exact process that I did a while back and my thinking and my rationale in, in doing this was because or my rationale in in doing this was what I initially wanted to do was to combine this new set of colors with the old one right and you'll see me mess around with the opacity towards the right uh, you'll see there's an opacity of 70% and then I think one other layer had an opacity of 40% um, what I really should have done to have help me speed it up although I'm not really sure if this would have speeded me up or not um, what I should have done was turn down that opacity a lot more instead of like leaving all those layers at 70% or 40% or however many percent that I had it I should have gone much lower like I some of them okay one of them eventually went it up to like 24% uh, opacity 40% opacity right there I, I don't know which layer that is and then another one that's 70 which that 70 and this 80% layer right here like those should have gone under 50% so basically all the layers all the new layers that I should have added should have all gone under 50% and if I had put those opacity layers or all those layers if I turned down all their opacity down to 50% what would have ended up happening was that a lot more of the original artwork would have shown through um, and if a lot of more of the original artwork would have shown through um, I felt like it could have gone a lot faster uh, with the process um, I think I'm not sure since obviously I didn't go down that route um, 
but basically that's kind of like what I had idea in my head was basically to just redo everything right repaint everything and then turn it down to like 40 50 percent uh, although initially I was thinking 70 percent would have done but obviously then combine it with the bottom part and then with the bottom part kind of showing through you know it would be a lot easier and a lot quicker for me to detail although now that I'm talking out loud and speaking this out loud I'm beginning to realize that this would not have worked either that this would have gone on for just as long as these edits would have gone on um, I guess to explain to you guys exactly what happened basically when I got all those last comments in and last critiques and basically what ended up happening you know, all the critiques pretty much involved the people right and since all the critiques pretty much involved the people I figured you know I might as well just re-got everything I did with the people and just redraw everything and my idea was you know I'm gonna repaint everything but combine that new painting somehow with the old painting and I was thinking in my head that since the old painting already exists the new painting should like go quicker you know it should only go for three or four hours was what my estimate was well I was wrong this whole thing that I'm doing right now took me another 10 painful hours 10 painful hours to get through <laughs> and so I'm just sitting there thinking like wow did I really need to go through all that process just to fix the sign issue which in hindsight I will tell you right now like it wasn't worth it like I beginning to think that like, the best approach would have been for me to do some filter edits instead of repainting everything you know um but the problem was that I was already knee deep in in fixing this you know so it was like since I've already had begun this process of pretty much resetting the characters and redoing the characters it became this thing of like well I'm already doing it I want to see the end of this you know so it became that you know and so if I had backed out say in the fifth hour mark and realized oh maybe I'm taking too long doing this yada da maybe I'll just restart again all over like that could have gone quicker but I felt like if I had backtracked it would have ended up being the same time wise like if I had backtracked say at the third hour mark which it would have been hard for me to backtrack at the third hour mark because I wouldn't realize that I'm making a mistake at that mark um, if I had backtracked at the three hour mark then yeah I would have saved time but if I had backtracked at the half hour mark I would not have saved time because if I had backtracked and reset it the amount of time that I would have done would be three four hours like my initial estimate right but since I already have like you know four or five hours left to do this new approach anyways I might as well stick it out with the new approach and so that's basically what ended up happening I basically just repainted all the characters and yeah part of me felt like <laughs> It took too long, 10 hours, wow, 10 hours of just repainting the same thing again, all for a cyan highlight issue. Um, and in the end, it became like one of those questions was, you know, of like, was it worth it or was it not worth it, you know? Um, again, like I mentioned, I actually do like the yellow highlights now, way better than the cyan highlights. So part of me says, yes, it's sort of worth worth it. But then if I equate the time that I put into it, I'm kind of like, uh, time, not so much. Like, I don't feel too confident with the time because it took too long. Now that I'm talking about it and I'm speaking it out loud instead of just like thinking it before in my head, I'm beginning to realize that there would have been better approaches to it. You know, like the best approach would really have been for me to copy the old layer or to copy the old painting, put it in on this new layer and do filter edits just you know either do color balance changes or curves balance or any of those amazing uh, filter edits that you can do to change the highlights um, and then somehow blend that newly edited new newly filter edited uh, layer blended in with the old one like that would have been the quickest quickest form of edit and now that I think about it and talking about it I felt like that would have just gone for an hour or two aside from the extra edits that I needed to do which is like the faces and the man eating ice cream 
so I should have done that you know but part of me kind of wanted to re do the whole repainting process you know which you know in the end I just ended up doing and again it's debatable whether the new paint is better than the old paint um, uh, I'm not gonna put up a comparison image of it and really because they're so closely similar anyways like not a whole lot of change I mean like a good example of this would be the girl the the sales girl in the ice cream stand like she pretty much looks the same the guy that's holding the cigarette he looks pretty much the same the only thing that's different with the guy holding the cigarette is his eyes I realized that his eyes were so much the same as the girl inside the store that I decided to change his eyes just to make him look a little different and then really the Asian guy and the punk guy and the hooker all look the same but the only one that's different is the cop and the nun um, the nun I change her expression you know to a, a bit more cheery person um, and you'll see me edit out um, her hand or the really the objects behind her hand because I realized since her hands not reading very well I'm just gonna move all those objects away uh, behind her just to make her hand pop out so you'll see me do that edit and then the cop which in all honesty the cop I, I was ne I never felt too happy with the way I rendered him he is by far the most detailed character out of everyone in in this ensemble but the way I rendered him just feels really off for me like perspective wise it doesn't feel right um, and yeah really more perspective wise I feel like it's off I'm like I can't it doesn't look right or something I'm not sure um but yeah um, oh, <laughs> what was this train of thought I lost my train of thought um so yeah the cop and the nun look uh, different but everyone else pretty much stayed the same obviously they're rendered differently I mean like the Asian guy is rendered differently if you look at him now he's not so green he's more warm which is really what we're going after you know cuz now that his warmer tone now that he has like warmer colors on him he kind of goes more along with the scene you know it it goes more right rather than the cyan highlight you know like I said sticky was right about about it needing warm highlights instead of cool highlights because the predominant light source is warm not cool um, so yeah um, but the actual rendering of the people I feel like is alright you know I mean there's some rendering that I like better in the old one like the hooker on the old one I felt was rendered better um, and the punk guy I think was rendered better and the bar girl I think was rendered better um, so yeah uh, there were definitely you know some good ones from the old one that I lost essentially um, but you know you win some you lose some um, and yeah whatnot so yeah so here's under 10 hours of work for me <laughs> right here um, which is fine you know I mean like I said that's that's the whole joy of the long illustrations is that it's all balancing rebalancing anything new that you add you'll have to rebalance with something else in the image you know or you have to make sure that it's balanced with the rest of the image any new detail that you put in any new de new ones that you decide to add you know you need to make sure that it's balanced and so of course you'll always run into situations like this you know and of course it's always like you know when you're in the middle of it it's kind of like one of those things where it's like it's really hard to decipher whether you're doing it wrong or not you know and you won't really know it's wrong until it's over you know and even if even if you had realized that it was wrong in the middle of it it's like one of those things where like well can I change tactic or should I stick with it you know and in this case if I had changed tactic it would have been even more wrong like I went down the wrong path and if I had changed that path you know then it would have been more wrong than as if I had just stuck it out with that initial wrong path you know if that makes sense because 
you know, if I had initially mistakenly chosen the wrong path, like at least I know how to correct it in the middle of it rather than having to backtrack and, you know, waste more time that way, I guess. So, so yeah, that's the choice of painting. <laughs> so many errors could potentially go wrong at any given point in time. You just need to be really smart about how to fix it. Especially since like, you know, in long illustrations like this, your biggest enemy is the time factor, you know. Part of you always wants to get this done quickly because because you just want to see the end. You just want to see the finished painting, you know. You just want to see the beauty of it. And it's just taking too long to get to it and you get frustrated. But yeah, it's always it's always a battle. But again, the results that are are much better than my speed paint, so yeah. It's a love-hate relationship, isn't it? <laughs> so yeah. But yeah, that's pretty much what is going to transpire in the next few minutes of this video. It's just pretty much me just doing the same thing that I did the last 30 minutes of this video. Um, which is just rendering the characters out. Um, except the one huge difference is the highlight. Instead of it being, you know, bluish green cyan, it's now more pinkish yellow uh, highlights.
Perfect. Perfect. Perfect.
so I'm close to finishing this piece basically um, so yeah I guess now would be a good time to just kind of go over some of the things that we've talked about in this video um, so yeah right now I'm just really finishing the detailing and like I said you know um, detailing that should not have taken place for this long but it did but no really what I wanted to talk about is the whole speed paint versus illustration and how I feel about it the long renders the long illustrations like these are my favorite because overall results amongst all my long renders are still better uh, when you compare them to all my speed paints but speed paints are awesome because there are unique things that happen in speed paint that you just don't see in long renders um, again I give the example of Van Gogh's Starry Starry Night you know when he painted it he was expressive he was on the go he was right at the moment he just did his thing and <laughs> he came up with this very iconic image that a hundred years later still resonates with us starry starry night is still everyone's vincent van gogh's favorite painting or uh, everyone's uh, favorite van gogh painting uh, and again as i mentioned if you try to develop starry night it just would not be as iconic as it is if it you know as if it stayed as an impressionist painting and so that's kind of like my speed paints you know um, a lot of my speed paints are uber failures I mean I have like a 70% failure rate when it comes to speed paints and even though you know I call them failures they're not they're not really failures I mean like any of my speed paints you can go to print and you'll be fine and you won't be made fun of so if you like work with me and ask me to do a speed paint more than likely I can come up with something that is presentable you know 80 to 90 percent of the time you know it is presentable um, but whether I love it and whether or not I think it's iconic that's that's the part where it kind of falls apart you know like I said you know even though practically all of my speed paints are worthy of going to print you know because they're good enough you know and I have enough skill to make it look good enough to go to print I still wouldn't push them to print just because I love my long renders way better you know um, I feel like it looks so much better uh, in my website I put up an article soon about this whole speed paint versus uh, long renders and I'll put up examples of my work uh, and this is going to be like one of the highlighted entries where I'll put up the speed painted version, the 30 minute one versus the 40, 50 hour work, which is this one right here. So that you guys can compare and contrast and see, you know, what the differences are. I'll also put the last long illustration I did, which it was, um, I'm okay to go. Uh, um, that one has like a 10 hour version and then uh, a 30, our version so I'll put them two together and you know you guys can read that article and see that what the stark differences are um, versus you know what the stark differences are between a quick work and a long work um, long works is what I always suggest I always feel that it's so much better you get better results but you do get some unique look with the quicker works so it's kind of half and half you know so if you want to do work with me for example and you're in a tight budget then I'll recommend the quick work you know um, like I said the quick work always works great and my skills are on par enough for all my speed paints to be presentable in a print format um, but again like I said you know to get like a really good look um, I'll always do the the long work so so yeah that's kind of like my schedule and my daily routine you know um, I always do speed paints and quick works uh, or quick paintings quick artwork 10 you know three hour to 10 hour kind of artwork uh, I do those a lot daily and 
in between all of those I do these long works like such as this one so and that's it and this is the end of the video thank you guys for watching I will catch you guys on the flip side good night